Awesome. So, hi everyone, and welcome to this to this presentation, which is about R socket. If you if you have never heard about R sockets, it's fine because I will be explaining the basics, the ideas, and I will be showing some good presentation during this talk. Uh, yeah, just just a little bit about myself. My name is Oleg. I'm from Kiev, from Ukraine. Uh, I'm software engineer focused on distributed system. I, I'm really um, inspired by reactive programming, and I really like all this reactive stuff, reactive systems. Uh, I, I like it so much, so I started contributing to Project Reactor, and I hope you heard about this project. This is similar to Rx Java, basically, but but better for server side. And um, I'm one of the kind of committers to R Socket, um, so I'm one of the developers of this of this project. And I hope I will be able to share the the ideas and explain why this this protocol is is perfect for cloud native technologies. So a little bit about what we are going to, to talk um, today. Uh, first of all, we will be looking at the challenges that we have today. Then we will take a look why our socket is, has a good fit for that. And after after all, we will be trying to, to play a little bit with this Java code, with JS code, and with maybe other implementations. But yeah, we will see that. So bear with me. I will be doing my best to, to explain. Uh, Wire socket is is awesome. Okay, so uh, in order to explain the the ideas and why our socket need to be developed, uh, we have to start from the history of of the protocols. And if we're gonna look at the 90s, we will see that at this point in time, uh, engineers were trying to solve really main problem: how to connect computers. And in order to connect them, prop uh, like properly, in order to to let them communicate in the same language, they had to develop a protocol for that. And they started inventing different things. Microsoft or, or other company invented all IPX, SPX, different protocols. But the main problem with, with those protocols is that the, the main idea for them was to, to bring more, more people on, on specific platform like Microsoft and to, to force them to use some specific uh, vendor or vendor or enterprise uh, specific uh, protocols which are proprietor and they're they're not the best because you're you're not able to to influence them or change them. That's why protocol like TCP became really popular and all these proprietor um, vendor based protocols became became like the best. So they went into history and nothing more. And today we all using open source developed by communities protocol. Then in 2000s or millennium, we started building, finally we started building applications, which are talking over this, this, these protocols. So the same happened again. Many companies decided to push their, their protocols like Corba, Comdecom, Com, Com, and most probably most of you have never heard about them or heard but never used because this is, man, this is a, the part of the history because this is proprietary protocols and only open source community based or community driven protocol became became popular and the standard way to to do to do a communication between between machines not machines but applications so it became http then a little bit um, yeah opinionated uh, period of time from i mean from my point of view opinionated is is like the the period of time of applications web applications uh, version 2.0, because at this period of time, we started building just more advanced or adv uh, architectural advanced applications with, with bigger API, which expose databases and so forth and so on. So we started representing our small microservices in, to, to browsers, to other services. And um, yeah, again, folks developed many protocols like ESB, SOAP, XML, RPC, and I guess most of you are remember them because part of you use SOAP and this is not the best solution. It's good, but it's not the best. It, 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 it might be improved, but it didn't happen. So REST became one of the most popular and main, main protocol for developing like your architecture, is, if I can say that. It's not a protocol, it's architecture, but anyways, it's kind of protocol. And finally, we got to today. So what we have today, basically, maybe we have to start 
with looking at what problem we should today in order to understand what, what protocols we have and whether they, they solve problems. Because this is kind of unclear unclear point uh, for now. What era are we living? Yeah, this is a good question. So what do we have today, basically? Um, based on the real reports, I, I, I didn't try to, to invent something new. I just tried to address this question just um, just just uh, using some real reports and researches in that area. And what real report says is that uh, in, in, in like in last five years, we got really huge crow of, of microservices development, which is which is awesome. We are building distributed system. A part of that with, with a huge growth of microservices, people started like looking for different environments, like possibility to deploy services to cloud, different clouds. So for example, to deploy to Amazon, to deploy to, to Microsoft Azure client, to deploy to Google Cloud. So we have many clouds today. And what they figured out is that so many engineers stumbled with many operational challenges and engineering challenges because now you have to connect microservices from Azure to microservices to, for example, Google Cloud. And now you have to think how to do that securely. What ports should I expose and so forth and so on? And it's, it's part of the problems. Another problem is how to develop microservices because now with microservices, you have many unreliable things and the main of them is network, of course. So a lot of challenges. And the main question is, how to solve that? What do we need today, basically, from, from the engineering perspective, from the operational perspective? And from my point of view, we need just, just a few things. We need reliable network, and we need proper messaging. Why? Basically, having, having message-driven protocol, we will be focusing on the message as the main, as the main. I mean, this is data. That's what we, we send over the network. So our protocol basically should, should support us in that. And if we have proper protocol that just allows us to simply send message and receive the same message without thinking what binaries, what bits are inside this protocol, how many bytes should we read and so forth and so on, what packets or layouts is underneath. If we just abstract from them and, and focus in on the message, this will, this will be much, much better for us and as for developers. On the other hand, um, yeah, if you want to build good microservices, fast microservices, I guess that's what every every company wants. We have high performance protocol, and yeah, protocol should support us with that as well. Because, for example, if you're going to use HTTP 1.0, we will be stacked with so many connections, and we will be spending most of our time just on opening and closing connections. Because nowadays we have trillions of requests, many like million requests per second. This is something that I heard from, from Exchange Platform. This is real numbers. So we have something that, that should support in simplification of, of communication. A part of that, we, we have to have some, some flexibility because so many years we've been, we've been using HTTP and it's good. this is a good protocol. I'm not saying something bad about HTTP. It solved many problems. However, the main pattern for many years that we used in HTTP was request response. But I believe that we need something something else because nowadays we wanna build some real time systems that sends so many data and we have to receive this data in almost near real time speed. So we have streaming. And yeah, HTTP is, is moving in that direction, for example, but it's not there enough. So what I'm saying is that we have to have some flexibility. We should be able to send request response, request stream. Maybe we have to have peer-to-peer -peer communications. And that's something that we need in order to build good microservices. Then we should have stable communication. Stable because, yeah, network is unreliable. Having a reliable protocol, having a reliable application protocol will give us a lot of benefits. But this is challenging if you want to achieve high performance, pattern flexibility. So if, if everything will be included, this will be super cool. And finally, what I wanna use, for example, as an engineer of mobile applications, of teapots, of Arduino, or any other uh, devices, what I wanna have is a protocol that works everywhere. So yeah, of course we have TCP, but it has some, some 
challenges in terms of message message sending. We have m many protocols, but yeah, the, the point is that most of them wasn't developed for for support for, on every device. But nowadays we are we are living in the era of edge network where everything can be connected to to everything. So yeah, we have to to, to keep in mind that the protocol should be should should address that that challenges as well. So. What we can understand from what I say is that we are living in kind of cloud native and microservices period of time. We have HTTP2, which was just an upgraded version of HTTP 101. We have HTTP3, which is which is not there yet. It's it's under development. It's not just officially supported everywhere. So it's not that year. It's much better, but yeah, we have to wait. But maybe we have to focus on something different. Maybe those protocols is just 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 an echo of the of past. Maybe they develop for, for browser or client server communication. And in fact, HTTP is just document oriented protocol. It's not developed for, for server to server or microservices. Of course, it's adopted for microservices, but maybe we have to just, just shift our mind and think about something different. Maybe we have to develop different protocol. And basically what I want to say is that this happened and folks developed our socket. This is, this is awesome protocol. So you may wonder what is our socket? I want to share just a few things for the beginning. Our socket is developed by the main companies, the, the companies that are built huge microservices. They have tons of traffic, which means that they, 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 they found a lot of problems. They found many challenges and they solved them in terms of microservices. So they should know how to build microservices, you know, and basically they should know what they need in the protocol. So in general product, our socket is open source layer five, six protocol. It's driven by community. So everyone can join the development and discussions. Uh, in general, our socket follows reactive stream semantics. So the main, the main citizen of our socket and the main communication pattern is, is streaming. But yeah, we will be talking about that a little bit later. It supports resilience. It has application level flow control. I will be explaining that later, later as well. And yeah, it supports different patterns of communication. So you shouldn't be um, stacked with just streaming. You will be able to do different RPC. You will be able to like different communication. You'll be able to build your RPC communication like or API on top of that. You, you can build everything on top of our socket basically. And the most important for everyone is that our socket is, is blazing fast. It's it's super cool. It's 10 times faster and it just use so much less resources. So you you will get rid of these tons of servers that you that you just bought because of HTTP 101. So let me just go in depth a little bit about, about the ideas hidden in our socket. First of all, our socket is a binary messaging protocol. Binary doesn't mean that you have to deal with bytes again. No, this you have to, to, to do with to deal with binaries, which means that you have to convert, for example, your JSON message to, to bytes. But it doesn't mean that you have to, to think about how to send the, 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 that number of bytes. What should I think about when I'm flashing and uh, like binary message to TCP connection and so forth and so on. No, everything is, is hidden behind your eyes. You just give like a payload to our socket. Then our socket does everything which is required in order to deliver this payload. And then this payload is reassembled back and carefully give you, given you back. So you will be able to decode it to the same JSON message as it was sent over the, over the wire. So. In general, our socket provides you with this, this message-driven communication. It gives you logical message. A part of just, just logical message, it has proper layout. So you can, you can include some metadata just along with your data. And of course, underneath it's, it's binary, which means efficiency, which means performance. So you can compress your information into a really small package in order to deliver with the fastest speed. This is the main benefit. So in general, data stands for for some some any message that you want to encode. Then metadata stands basically for the same as in, in normal HTTP communication. And um, yeah, we have some additional extensions that allows you to to encode your 
your metadata with some specific layout so you can encode your tracing, monitoring information, routing, different MIPE times and so forth and so on, which might be useful for some advanced cases. But anyways, you have everything included, which is cool. Uh, what about performance? I mentioned that this is really important, and our socket follows all the best, like the best concept for for um, giving you performance from the network communication. First of all, our socket uses multiplexing. So, what does it mean? Basically, when you want to send lots of logical streams, for example, you want to send request response for API one, for API two, three, and so forth and so on. You don't have to create many connections. You can use one, as in HTTP2, for example, and everything that you, that you have to, to do is just send in streams. That's it. Our socket provides everything that you need, like logical stream and distinguishing between this is that message, it relies to stream blue, and responder will be able to receive this particular message from, from stream blue, not from stream yellow. So this effort is done underneath all you have to do is just use Project Reactor, basically Rx Java. And what I want to say is that you, you are not just, just bound to reactive programming or reactive streams. We got so many requests to support imperative. So maybe in, in a future versions, we will be giving you some, some imperative API, like just, just value or iterable in order to send stream. So you'll be able to, to use it with, with less this overhead from, from reactive programming, which is awesome. Anyways, it's cool. It, it performant. And yeah, you, you can sure and, and you can find a lot of blog posts about performance. What about flexibility? Um, and from flexibility, I mean the problem that nowadays we are pretty stuck to some particular transports. For example, HTTP2 is bound to TCP. That's why HTTP3 is developed in order to support, for example, some, some advanced stuff like UDP in order to, to get better performance. Is RSOC, you don't have this problem. You are not bound to some specific low level protocol. What you need is, is to know that RSOC, it brings some layout. It brings some message format, formatting. It provides some re, 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 um, required infrastructural code in order to deliver your messages and streams. And then you may use any reliable transport and Denise in order to deliver your messages. So for example, if you, if you wanna communicate with browsers, which is possible, of course, you may use WebSocket and that's fine. You just created your business logic. You just built your API, which handles your stream request response and so forth and so on. And then it works over WebSocket. And if you need, for example, TCP in order to communicate with, with other services, it's possible you can just replace this transport without changing your, your, your business logic. Or for example, if you want to have better performance, you can use Quick or for example, Aeron. And for that, you don't have to change the whole application and rewrite some specific huge part of code in order to support Aeron, which is pretty challenging and, and like not simple, I would say solution, but really performant. And this is almost for free for you. You have to just switch transports and I will be showing that. A part of that, Resilience. In order to build good reactive system, our application should be should be stable in the face of, of failures. And we provide in order to save you from different failures like out of memory, which might easily happen when you got so many messages. We provide mechanism like back pressure from reactive streams. And now if you want to receive 11 elements, because you know that there is just 11 elements which can fit in your memory or in your queue, you, you may directly say that, give me 11 elements, give me 11 messages in this particular stream. This request will be transformed to some specific binary message, deliver it to, to the responder side, and the responder will be able to decode it back. This is built-in mechanism, you don't have to care about that, and send exactly this number of messages, which is, which is awesome. This is, this is built-in guarantee. This is built in warranty of reactive streams and it's, it's transparent for you right now. There is no hidden pitfalls. You can just use it. And a part of that, we have some advanced resilience, um, resilience features in our socket, which is built in. For example, um, you know that servers has capacity, right? Usually reactive streams back pressure works for clients where mobile phone requests 
uh, some stream and then servers start pushing a lot of data, for example, huge images to process on your mobile phone, which may lead that your mobile phone will, will easily turns off or runs out of battery. So what do you want to control in that particular case is, of course, the stream, like the, the control of, of flow of messages or, or images. But on the other hand, so many mobile phones can be easily connected to one server. So your server can be easily overwhelmed by, by their requests, which is also the case. So in our socket, we have built-in mechanism for, for control in that case as well. And now server can sell its capacity and say, well, folks, you're not allowed to, to talk to me right now. So it means that there is kind of natural built-in rate limiting. And server can, ten, can dictate whether some specific client is allowed to, to communicate with it or not. So you don't have to check it all the time and receiving errors as a result, which is, of course, some, some, something which we want to avoid. And it means that, in general, you can simplify your circuit breaker because this is built in in protocol, so you may avoid a lot of hooks in order to check whether the service is alive, whether it's healthy or not, and so forth and so on, which is, which is good for us. What about communication patterns? I mentioned that this is something demanded today. We, we need different communication patterns, and yeah, we have everything. We have normal request response. I mentioned that this is stream protocol, but in fact, we support different communication patterns like request response. We have request stream, of course, if you want to receive a stream of messages, live updates or something like that. We even support bi-directional streaming. So you can stream from one side some messages, receive another messages, which is, which is kind of pipe over the, remote, uh, over the remote service. And we have something like just, just push me something like logs and you don't have to, to, to wait for the result. You, you care about just message sentence, that's it, right? This is, this is built in as well. This is the best effort and the simplest, the lightweight, uh, the most lightweight messaging in the protocol. And the most important for me is that it's, it's not ended with communication patterns. In fact, protocol is kind of peer to peer. So at the very beginning, client just establishes connection to server. And yeah, this is the point where we have client and server. And it seems, well, this is client server communication, no. Once the connection is established, we have real peer-to-peer -peer communication. And server can say, hey, client, client, can you give me some data from, from your side? You may imagine that you have a mobile phone and accidentally you want to check whether this mobile phone is alive, what is the status of battery? But it doesn't mean that mobile phone should periodically send this information. It's, it might be some, 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 random, some random action or check whether this particular phone is alive. And for that purpose, you don't have to create some, some complex logic on the client side. You may directly ask client whether there is something. So it's kind of ingress communication where server can blindly connect to client or client can connect to server and then server can ask some data from client. And at the same time, it doesn't prevent client to ask some data from server, which is which is which is really good way of, of doing communication, which is gives more flexibility for, for, for example, for server-server communication, where previously you had to create one connection from server to another server, then you had to create another connection from this server to another server, which, which is just, just nonsense. You know, it's better to have one and communicate in both directions. This is obvious. So yeah, this sounds good, but uh, in order to give you some, some, some better ideas, let me just show you some, some, some code. I'll be really quick. First of all, this is uh, in this example, uh, we will be looking at, at RSocket Java and RSocket JS. So this is kind of browser and server edge network. And in order to start using RSocket in Java, what you need to know is that few things. The first one is RSocket. So RSocket is, is a kind of the, the main, the, main uh, the, the first class citizen in the protocol. It gives you different ways of doing communication, like I mentioned, fire and forget, request response, request stream, request channel. So everything in a place. And then, as I mentioned, this is message-driven protocol. So the second thing which, about which you should be aware is payload. And payload is your, is your message, is, is 
is the, the thing in which you may encode your metadata, in which you may encode your data. And of course, it, it's binary because it's binary for the performance, but you may encode everything in byte buffer, you know. So now you know everything about our socket almost. And in order to, for example, create a server, what you have to do, you have to say our socket server, we just change it ever our API for 1.0, which is which is which is a lot of effort from Rosen Stojanovic from, from Sprint Boot team. So he, he is a guru of great API and he updated the API to be super, super nice. So you have two, option, two, two options to create your server just by saying create, or for example, for the most cases, you wanna create your server with some predefined API. So you wanna directly say, well, I wanna be able to handle incoming connection and respond with some, some information. For example, you wanna say socket acceptor with our socket. This is the most simple, simplest case. And then what we need to do as a users, we have to implement our socket interface. Let's see it. For example, we want to implement some request streaming. Oops. And here we go. Our socket request stream. We over override by one message. We say once we will be called with some some payload, let's return some flux of of elements and let's use byte bulk payload in order to have better performance and return some messages. Here we go. Project reactor. And if you know project reactor. You're, you're good in our socket as well. If you're not, yeah, you will have to use, you have to learn a little bit about project reactor, reactive programming, but yeah, I believe that we will simplify that as well in the future. So what else? We just created the, the basics. We just defined socket acceptor. We just created our initial API. This is the simplest what you can do. Of course you can do more. Anyways, then you may, you may do even more setups. Protocol is really rich, rich of futures. If you need resumability, you may imagine that you're, you're connected from a mobile phone and now you wanna, you wanna continue some streams if you just, just lost your connection. You, you don't wanna reestablish everything and ask for new streams. You just wanna, once you switch it from 3G to 4G or from, from 4G to Wi-Fi, you just wanna make sure that everything is continued. And sometimes it's, it's, it's not that easy. With our socket, this is built in future, you say, Let's support resume. If we got, if we lost connection, don't don't worry. We will reestablish that, and all your stream will be automatically continuated. Or, for example, if you send big files, there is fragmentation. So you say, I want to have my frames not higher than, for example, 64 bytes, which is which is possible. Of course, this is nonsense, and you will put much higher number. But anyways, this is supported. So you will, you will not take the whole network bandwidth just for a single message. What else? Um, well, there is a lot of features. You, you can take a look at them, but for now, what we need is we, we need to bind to some specific transport. And the most important of that transport is just interface. There is no specific bounds to, to TCP or HTTP or whatever transport. You are fully abstracted for that. From that, and for example, there is built-in implementation for WebSocket server transport, where you can easily say, "Let's start on on the port 88," and yeah, that's basically what you want to do. Yeah, let's let's define for uh, stability local host, and basically that's it. And now you have your application started. This is channel. So, for example, in order to keep this thread running, you would say, "Let's wait for for close event," and once um, the, 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 the server is closed, we will, we will shut down the whole Java application. That's it. Now, we, I'm not going to be writing something similar for JavaScript. I will be just using predefined code. This is, this is our socket for JavaScript. This is client side, but it, it almost the same. So you say our socket client start, you define WebSocket transport for that purpose. It can be TCP as well. You say, this is my URL to, to which I want to connect provide some setup information like data my type, metadata, keep alive, this is built-in feature. And once application is connected, you will be notified. So let's try to, to, to see that. Let's try to reload app. Yeah, our application is not running. So let me just quickly run this app. It's running. This is Sprint Boot for, for simplicity. And here we go. We can see connected to our socket server. And here is real WebSocket 
connection and here's a real binary messages. So now let's do the more, uh, a little bit more sophisticated stuff. Let's do a request. So for example, let's say request stream yeah, I'm using templates. And here is how you can, you can write request stream. So this is, this is symmetric API. Here you had request stream and in the client side, you have request, the same request stream. So it's kind of transparent for, for you. You're kind of calling the same, the same client over, over the network and it's invisible, it's reliable, it's asynchronous. This is cool. And here you have subscription. You say, once I got this number of messages, for example, 10, please, please print them. So let's take a look at the browser. We can see binary message comes in and here we go. If you're gonna restart it, we will see that we got responses. Yeah, kind of responses. And the, 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 the coolest part that, that I'd like to, to share is something like this. So we can put, for example, in a window, our subscription and we can control, yeah, whatever. Yeah, let's, let's say it window as any, and let's put subscription in it and ask. What it means is that uh, now I have this subscription that I just received uh, in the global environment. And for example, it means that, um, yeah, I'm not calling any requests here, which is part of reactive streams communication, but it means that right now I have access to this subscription, which I just got. And as you can see, there is no messages comes in. And now I will show you the power of back pressure. I will be saying, give me one message. Bam, I got one message. For example, 10. Bam, I got 10 messages. Five. Five messages. And it's real, real transparent communication with, with the server. Because yeah, I'm not logging it, but if you if you put some logs in your in your in your applications, for example, here, you will see that more messages comes in. And yeah, what final things that I want to show you is, is some advanced stuff. So um, let me just uh, check out the, the final solution. Check out revision. Nope. Yeah, let's let's revert. Yeah, let's reset hard. No, it doesn't work. Whatever. In general, what I want to say is that you are able to, to do peer-to-peer -peer communications, but we are running out of time. So let's focus uh, on the rest of the presentation and I will be sharing this, this code so you will be able to get more insights about our socket and how it works on Denise. So in general, to summarize, our socket protocols brings you different ways of communication like peer-to-peer -peer streaming request response. It brings you back pressure with flow control. There is leasing, which is, which is the main idea is building rate limiting. There is resumability in order to support stability when it comes to, to an unstable network. There is fragmentation, which, is, which allows you to send huge fi files over the wire without thinking how to solve this problem. And in general, you can extend protocol because there is extension, uh, extension frames, which allows you to provide some extra future just in case you need them. Then on top of this protocol, you can send any message, binary, protobuf, JSON. You can do any architecture, RPC, messaging. You can use any language. You just seen Java and JavaScript. But in fact, we support C++, Kotlin, Flow. We support uh, Rust, Go, Python. There is a ton of different languages which you might use today and get all these benefits of this uh, Reactive Streams protocol as a network protocol. And finally, you can, you can easily switch between different transports if there is a demand for that. And you don't have to rewrite this this upper part because you change different, because you use now right now different protocol, which works a little bit different. Our socket takes care of all of this. So what about user experience? User experience is great. You support, you support our socket RPC. So you heard about gRPC. There is the same R socket RPC. Basically, this is gRPC over R socket. We use the same protobuf RPC generator. We generate the same files, and now you can enjoy more faster, stable, and flexible protocol and use the same RPC communication style. A part of that, we like a subtraction for RPC. We have IPS, so you can define different way of like inter-process communication. We have support for GraphQL, so it's basically our socket over GraphQL. And of course, for all the fans of Spring, there is Spring Boot started for R socket. And you can easily just use your message mapping 
your controllers, and now everything will be working on top of our socket. I love it. This is awesome. Of course, as a users, as an engineers, you have to know about some disadvantages of our socket. And one of them is that our socket is pretty bright new technology. And as you can see from the last report in, in the second quarter of, of uh, uh, 2020, our socket is just in the innovators section, which means that this is, this is not well adopted technology. But we are improving ourselves, don't worry about that. A part of that, we just recently released our socket Java, but the rest of the implementation is still under development, which is, which is not the good sign for, 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 for huge enterprises. But yeah, you will see. And yeah, this is, this is really, really sad part. We are lack of good documentation. And I'm saying you're welcome to help us. We, we need good doc writers. We need support in, in writing blog posts. So if you wanna, bro, wanna help us, just don't hesitate to ping me. And finally, there is, there is um, not well implementation in all of the languages. For example, there is no implementation in Swift. So this is, this is another kind of R socket. However, we have a tons of process. First of all, this is cloud native protocol. As you notice, we solve most, we cover most of the cloud native needs for, for, from the engineering perspective. It's designed for high performance. It has really good resilience as a first class citizen. So you can easily build your reactive system. And you, you, we, are, we are doing our best to, to make it better and better. So this is important to know for you. And finally, in order to bring more people, we have reactive foundation. You can Google for it. And this foundation is similar as like, it's, it's under the Linux foundation. It's similar to cloud native foundation. It it's brings resilience, reactive streams, reactive system to, to, to more enterprises. This is idea of this foundation. So what you can take away from this? Basically, most of yesterday protocols has gaps. This is, this is true. They were not designed for, for cloud native initially. Our socket covers most of these cases. Unfortunately, we are still under development, but we are improving. Community is growing, which is good. And yeah, nowadays, you can just start from Spring. You can get all the benefits. And maybe in a few months, you will, you will see more and more improvements in other languages, which is awesome. This is basically it from my side, but I wanna add one more thing. In general, it's not just protocol, it's even more. We have broker specification, which is based on R socket. And in general, in order to explain R socket broker protocol, you have to think about just previous, about history. For example, how TCP or general networking works. So we have computers, right? That's what you know about, about protocols. Then you have transports under your computers, then you use internet on one side, then you use internet on another side, and then you have to connect these two computers. So underneath there is different routers, which, which accept connect, connection from your computer. And this router knows that this computer is, is on this side, but I'm not quite sure. So I, I have to ask another router in, in, in the essence. So it connects to another router and say, well, please deliver this packet to computer B. And then finally the router delivers this packet to computer B. Of course, this, is opt this optimizes over time. Router one will, will figure out that there is a shorter pass and so forth and so on. However, this is how our networks works. Yeah, this is true. And it, my point is that in general, we don't care. There is router specification, there is Cisco, there is Mikrotic, there is different routers. We don't care about, about vendor. This is standardized thing. And router specification means that can, can, in order to, can, to connect computer A and B, we have to route packets. In order to route packets, we have to discover other computers, other routers. And that's how we can, we can bring a network, real network in. And of course, we have to load balance all this, this, this networking in order to, 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 to share the load. All right, coming back to our socket. In general, our socket brings the same, the same. Now you have, instead of computers, because we are building microservices, we, we have different applications, right? Like Node or Java application. Then we have particular API abstraction in order to, to send messages to TCP or UDP. It doesn't matter. Then we have client libraries, because client libraries is something that engineers use. We just want to send messages, right? And then underneath, we have peer-to-peer -peer communication with, with, with R socket. Everything is connected with R socket. 
instead of routers, you have RSocket broker, which does the same. And now you may connect one application to another, and this will be fully transferred. So you can build microservices network or micro network, I say, and it will be equivalent to, to router specification because the idea is the same. You connect service A, service B, route messages, discover other broker, other broker, brokers, other services, and load balance network. So it's real micro or, or socket micro network or kind of. It's, it's something that we are working on. It's, it's not there yet, but yeah, you will see it pretty soon. And this is another story. All right. In general, that's it from my side. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. There is some links on our socket official web page. If you want to learn a little bit more about our socket, there is there is tons of videos. And if you want to ask some questions related to our socket, you can ping me directly or you can ask it on our socket uh, reactive foundation. There is community forum and there is dedicated topic for our socket. So don't hesitate. Thank you for your attention. And I'm, I look forward to, to, to hearing your questions. All right. Well, thank you, Oleg. Uh, that was great. Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have time for questions this time, but we have plenty of questions on Discord. If so, if you could uh, spend a couple of times uh, jumping into Discord and answering, answering the community questions, that would be great. Absolutely. I will right. be doing that. Thank you for having me. It was really a pleasure to talking about our socket at Spring.io. And stay safe stay at home and enjoy good content. Great, so you. thank you very much. Uh, so we're gonna have a five minute break before the next session. So jump onto Discord, ask any questions and we'll be back in five uh, uh, minutes at, um, for the next presentation. <laughs>